bunch of different ways to represent relations. Uh, you got story problems, pictures, equations, tables, graphs, sequences, right? So we're going to look right now at taking a relation that's represented as a equation rule and translating that to a table, a graph, or a sequence. I, if you don't remember, relations look something like this. Relation notation, this is lesson number four. Right? How that works is you've got the name of the relation here, my phone. Okay, and previously in lesson number four, we just looked at individual values for relations. So like, for example, what is the value of G when N is negative six? Right, and you should do in that situation negative six squared minus 17. All right, you got your 36 minus 17 equals 19. All right, so that's what we were dealing with in section four. Okay, now relations do involve individual values but they also can be looked at as complete sets of ordered pairs complete sets of ins and outs okay and probably the simplest way to show a complete set would be to just make a table All right here's my n values here's my g of n values for you guys if i ask you to make a table I'm going to want you to choose your n values. I believe with your work with this topic, I'm going to say I want you to choose seven different n values. And I want three of them to be negative, three of them to be positive, and one of them to be zero. All right. So you choose your values. n is negative 8, n is negative 4, n is negative 10, n is 0, n is 12 n is 5, n is 1, okay? Where did these numbers come from? I chose them. All right, you'll choose them. Did I have to choose these numbers? No, I could choose any numbers to start my table, okay? And then you apply your rule n squared minus 17 to each of these numbers. So for the first one, negative 8 squared minus 17. All right, 64 minus 17 is 54, 47. All right, when n is negative 8, g of n is 47. All right, same idea for each of these. When n is 12, I'll have n squared, 12 squared, minus 17, 12 squared, 144, minus 17, 127. All right, when n is 12, the function or the, or the relation equals 127, okay? That's how this works, and you would fill out the whole chart. All right, I'm going to leave that there for you. Hit pause, see if you can fill out some of these other values, and then hit unpause, and you'll see the rest of them fill in in a different color so you can check yourself, okay? If you're going to represent relations graphically, Whatever your input variable is, is going to become x, and whatever your output rule is, it's going to become y for the graph, okay? And then probably the easiest way to step from the relation rule to the graph is first make a table of values. Again, you choose your x's, or in this case, I X and T are 
are the same thing. H and Y are the same thing. All right, so you'll pick some T values, all right, some X values or T values. So as I said before, I'm going to want you to take three negatives, three positives, and zero. So zero, we'll say negative four, negative six, negative ten, uh, two, ten, and twelve. Okay, those are my seven values. Then I will grab a calculator and figure out what does h equal when t is each of these values, or what does y equal when x is each of these values. Okay. Remember, if you're using a calculator with fractions, there's an understood parentheses around the numerator. And if there was more than one thing in the denominator, there would be an understood parentheses around that. Okay? 0 minus 4 is 4 divided by 10 is 4 tenths, all right? 0 0.4. When t is negative 4, we've got 16 minus 4 is 12 over 10 is 1.2. When t is negative 6, we've got 36 minus 4 is 32 divided by 10 is 3.2. When t is negative 10, we've got 100 minus 4 is 96 divided by 10 is 9.6. All right, and again, you could use the calculator. Uh, instead, if you're going 2 squared minus 4 inside of parentheses divided by 10. That's how it would look. Enter. We've got when t is 2, h equals 0. When t is 10, we again have 100 minus 4 on 10, so we're going to have 9.6 again. And when t is 12, we've got 144. Minus 4 is 140, divided by 10 is 14. Okay, so those are our values. And from there, we're looking kind of like skill number 6. All right, I have to say, where am I going to put my axes? And what am I going to count by so that I can fit all my data? So I need to get from negative 10 to positive 12 in the x direction. So I'm going to put my y-axis near the center. Uh, let's see. If I put it here... I'll be able to count by twos, I think. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, negative. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, positive. Okay. Uh, my y values are all positive. So I'm going to put my axis way down low. I don't need quadrants 4 and 3. And I need to get up to 14. All right, so I'm going to count by twos in that direction as well. Remember, if you are counting by anything except for one, you have to write your, you have to label your axes. All right. And then it's just a matter of, Plotting your points from your table. Well, anyway, with this corrected zero negative 0.4, we've got a point at zero and then down just a little bit. We've got a point backwards four and up just a little bit. We've got a point backwards six and up between two and four. We got a point backwards ten and up almost ten.
we got a point forward to not up at all we got a point forward 10 not almost 10 and we got a point forward 12 and up 14 so we got this nice little smiley curve going on here all right usually we try to make a smooth curve to connect all our points to represent our relation all right so that is representing a relation graphically the last way that we could represent relations is through what's called a sequence the sequence is a list of consecutive answers to rule G. All right, list okay, by consecutive I mean one after another. Usually we either start with n equals zero or n equals one. So for this one, I'm gonna start with n equals zero. All right, zero squared minus 17 is negative 17. One squared minus 17 is negative 16. Two squared, four minus 17 is negative 13. Three squared, nine minus 17 is negative eight. 4 squared, 4 squared, 16 minus 17 is negative 1. 5 squared, 25 minus 17 is positive 8. 6 squared, 36 minus 17 is 19. Okay? And that's how you build a sequence, right? So you're applying the rule to consecutive terms. Now, it's a little different from doing a table or a graph. Uh, we only show our answers. Right? We don't show what we used to find the answers. We don't show what number they link in with. When we're writing a sequence, 